Hey YouTube, welcome back. We've been discussing a couple of things about Last Epoch recently about the downsides of the game coming out into 1.0 and still having quite a few bugs in the game. The thing that I've recently discussed has been a thousand corruption and how I feel about it and like the relative strength of these builds and the things that I do and do not care about when it comes to comparing one build to another build. But today, we're going to be looking at something else. This video was recommended to me as a rabbit hole of sorts. Hopefully it generates a good piece of discussion and I'm going to do something that I very seldomly do and be a react Andy. So this is a 20 minute video. We might watch the whole thing. We might put it on fast forward. We might see how it goes. This is a YouTube streamer guy. Uh, his name is Havoc Gaming. This is not Havoc from, uh, from Path of Exile, different Havoc here. And he has a video called The Downfall of Last Epoch, The End Already, double question mark. So I want to echo something that I said just a moment before I hit record. I hope, and I've been led to believe, that this is good conversation here. So I want to talk about it because there are plenty of valid criticisms to make about Last Epoch right now. Hopefully we get to talk about those. Uh, I want to double down on saying that I really hope this does not come off as punching down. Um, because I am a content creator in the space of Last Epoch, and I don't recognize this person's name. It looks like they're a smaller YouTube creator, even though I'm also a small YouTube creator. But let's jump in. Let's see what this person has to say and see whether this is actually the good discussion that I was led to believe that it is. So... ...to change it because they were too scared to lose what? The Wait. Valerie earned 20 and 40 million to change it because they were too scared to lose what preview the valerie earned 20 or 40 million like i've said there is no point preview? in playing past a certain point because of it last three chapters which i believe will be the emperor the snake lady and uh obelisk now it might be hard to believe that a company who earned 20 to 40 million dollars in their first season is in a collapse now i'll explain as we go in this talk lack of a better word we're going to discuss why last epoch pretty much creating its own collapse and what it could change to actually fix it and why they probably won't unless a large body of players stop playing. Now, first we'll talk about the actual reasons of why things are success or not, in my opinion, as far as this genre. Now, replayability is obviously the key aspect. People finding it interesting and all that ties into the replayability, but it's got the graphics and artwork that is fine for the genre and its own little niche. So as far as the, all that, it should do fine if it changes some of the fundamentals. Now, as I said, it earned 20 or $40 million on launch. That is based on them saying that 1.4 million users logged in and the standard price, as far as I'm aware, was around 35 American dollars for last epoch. So if you just take half of that, that's 26 million that they earned before expenses and up towards 50 mil with everyone paying full price obviously some of those login users were beforehand but i want to speed it up but i feel like 1.25 is good they brought uniques and stuff to support as it was developing which cost up to a thousand bucks so you can see that they have their money now replayability if we count the top games we will count the last epoch we will count poe and we'll count d4 or Diablo 3 because D4 is virtually turning into Diablo 3. Now, the replayability has to be endgame purely because that's what you do repetitive to upgrade your character. This we have Echoes, the last uh, POE, we have maps and Nightmare Dungeons and some... I'm, I'm dying to speed this up. Um, one thing that I'll say right now at the very beginning is I made a video previously talking about the endgame of Last Epoch and the endgame is definitely one of the weakest points. I'd say the bugs are going kind of a weak point right now as well. But the end game of Last Epoch is not good. And I've made this comment before and I was mocked for it because people say like, oh, this guy who's got 5,000 hours in Last Epoch also thinks that the end game of Last Epoch is not good. And it's because I have critical thinking skills. So the thing that I like about Last Epoch is the replayability that this person's talking about. 
I like to find interesting builds. I like to level up different characters. I like to explore niche interactions and make cool things happen on the screen. So you can play an action RPG for any number of reasons, right? You can play it for like, I want to blast tier 16 or tier 17 maps with 100% delirious. And I don't care if it's my own build that I came up with. I just care like somebody made this build. I want to play that build. It's a tool in able to allow, or allowing me to engage with the content that makes the dopamine happen in my brain, the juiced up content. That is not in Last Epoch. Probably won't be here for a while. If that's the kind of thing you like about action RPGs, you probably don't like Last Epoch. However, if you like making new characters, if you like finding cool gear, if you like like the gamble process, the prediction, if you like the gamble process for like making LP items, if you like finding cool loot on the ground, if you like exploring niche interactions or like build contests like I run, if you like those other things, Last Epoch's a really good game for you. But this guy, I think this is what he's gonna currently talking about. And like Last Epoch's Endgame, if that's the part of the endgame you like, it's not there. It's not gonna be there for a while, for sure. Other things, but pretty much Nightmare Dungeon Sport Diablo. Diablo is stale and boring and the same dungeon over and over and over again without any change is mainly why people don't like running that. It also is a side quest and the, all that rubbish that people want out. It's got other fundamentals with actual feeling powerful. Last Epoch does have issues in the power feel. There is, I have a graph that's expertly done in paint that has an example of the actual replayability, but we'll discuss that in a second. I, I peeped yep. forward on the graph that he made. It looked suspiciously like the graph that I saw. Oh, chat, don't ask me what people's names are. Someone, some like giga large content creator who was, oh, was it Darth Microtransactions? I think it was, it was, it was Darth, right? I think Darth made some kind of comparison about like the graphs and like replayability and like when you're having fun for these uh, for these various games. I think it was a video that he put out. It looked a little bit similar to that. So we'll see. you run the exact same map and you actually have a choice of running a variety of maps, but it usually comes down to running a handful. Why does this not feel the same as Nightmare Dungeon and Diablo? And why is Last Epoch echoes slightly better than Nightmare Dungeons because of the added stuff over the 10 odd years of POE. The leagues have added a little bit by little bit and you interact with different things and you choose, I'm going to go high sanctum, this, that, the other thing, and you can focus on a specific end game. That would be boring if you couldn't get that power and get the endorphins going and feeling good about your character because you're crushing content and you're reaching new limits, limits, limits. And then you can also go the boss way and go Ubers and all that. And now that the new POE sort of way they've done it, the bridge, the gap, so the power level, you feel like you're going up, 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 up. Which is why Last Epoch is killing itself because they have deliberately said, we are going to introduce a damage reduction if you are too powerful for our bosses we want you to do the mechanics and get good at the mechanics and beat the bosses because you've beaten the mechanics that's fine but if you end up with a character this this is a argument from like five years ago and it's kind of boring hoping hoping the arguments get better so far so for the people who are watching live and on youtube uh what he's describing currently is called boss dr and we have chat commands that reference what boss dr is boss dr is going to be changing in the future what boss dr currently does uh it uh, it unnecessarily it it punishes hmm let's see what is boss dr when you deal damage to a boss it takes less damage okay so when you when you bonk an enemy when you bonk the boss it deals less damage so you bonk him once it deals a lot of damage you bonk him with the exact same damage it only deals this much damage on his health because boss dr is kicking in there is no game there's no uh one-shotting past boss dr boss dr always takes place boss dr will reset if you go like two minutes without hitting the boss so there's there's like a couple um things for you to know about boss dr in, in last epoch people complain about it for a long time the developers are aware of the complaints that it has it might sound like i am defending last epoch but boss dr sucks it's stupid like it it's something that 
do, is not immediately apparent to the to the gamer and i hate things that are not apparent to the gamer i don't like having to go to a third-party website in order to learn things about the game for example there's a hidden mechanic in last epoch called lp level you all hopefully know what lp level is i think lp level is the exact kind of thing that i would like to see show up in game if i hold down alt on an item and it tells me lp level of this and then if i go to the in-game guide and i type in lp it says lp level and it explains me exactly what that is like last epoch has this in-game guide this stuff should be there so going back to boss dr currently the way the boss dr works it punishes all builds in a similar fashion unless you literally don't hit the boss for like two minutes um it feels more punishing for bonky builds because you bonk him once, you deal half his health. You you feel like if you bonk him again, hopefully you're going to kill him again. Because 50% times 2 is 100%. Doesn't work that way. Uh, it feels relatively less punishing for fast-hitting builds. And for a long time in Last Epoch, fast-hitting builds have been the meta. Because you stack up ailments, you stack up shred, you stack up armor shred, you stack up all those debuffs faster. And, like, bonky skills just don't really have a lot of... They don't have enough support... A majority of them don't have enough support in Last Epoch. And, like, getting your skill to cost zero mana and scaling a 10 cast speed feels really fucking good. Um, boss DR will be changing in the future. Uh, we don't have the details of that. EHG has said that they want to change it. They want to change the whole system. And one of the goals of the new changes is to make uh, heavy hitting builds not feel as punishing. So there, there's a couple pieces of information about you or about Boss DR. Uh, regarding what this current conversation is this is an old conversation i hope that we get to more interesting pieces of the argument because i like what he's saying so far i just feel like we could do better than this so let's see who i went back and tested this i had a character who got the empowered monoliths at level i think he was 84 i think my rune master was that particular one i went back to take on the architect and then Lagon, just because I wanted to test some things to see whether the damage reduction was really, really bad, or it just felt that way because you don't necessarily go backwards. But with I guess it's, it's important to note that like, what he said about why boss damage reduction exists in the game, it, it literally does exist for the reason that he said it exists. EAG said, we want people to engage with the mechanics of a boss, so we put boss damage reduction in there so that you wouldn't just one shot the boss because I, I I think they said something along the lines of like we spent a lot of time making these bosses and on these cool mechanics we want you to engage with them. I can't find a source for that. I'm pretty sure that's what they said. But like in an action RPG, I want to feel strong when I am strong. If I gear my character up ridiculously strong, I I want to one shot these things. There's an interesting conversation that I've had in the past talking about like, what should you be able to tank as a character? And like, so tier four Jura, she has that channeled one or like the one shot thing. She like stands there for eight seconds and she bonks you. And like, should that be tankable? Should that be something that is able to one shot you? And it's very close to the boss damage reduction thing, right? It's like, you, I want to one shot the boss, but what if the boss wants to one shot me? Should there be mechanics in an action RPG at all? This is an interesting question. Should there be an, a, a mechanic in action RPG at all where the boss automatically kills you? And like hardcore, okay, hardcore exists. It could just like kick you out of the dungeon and like you die, but you don't actually die. Should there be a mechanic that you literally cannot tank? And I don't know. Cause like, it's, it's not a good or a bad thing. It's just like a different design perspective. Like if I gear my character up and get extraordinarily tanky, should I be able to tank that? And I think the answer is yes. Because, like, an action RPG is, like, this power fantasy. Like, you have these bosses that are big and scary, and then I get all this insane gear, and I want to beat her up. And I want to beat up my middle school bully. And I want to tank her one shot. Isn't that something that's good? I I think that should that, that should exist in the game. So, I don't know. If, if I can one shot somebody, I feel like I should be allowed to. The new factions, the things you can do is during the campaign, so you go back, defeat some of the campaign stuff to get runes and stuff. It took me ages compared to passing the Echo bosses to beat the Architect. Because my character was dealing that much damage, the damage reduction kicked in, and I had to play the game of dodging everything for both the Architect and Lagon. 
Now Lagon is usually quite tanky, and even in the Echo is usually quite tanky. But when you're able to empower your monoliths, but you've got to play the mechanics with a level 52, 53 boss to the point where it takes you like 5, 10 minutes to beat the boss. Now I might be exaggerating with the 10 minutes, but it took me probably at least 5 minutes to beat the architect because I had to keep running around her teleporting and the damage reduction. That will kill Last Epoch quicker than anything. I'm worried. He said, like, I'm able to empower my monoliths. That's probably like like a like a lightly geared character. Um uh, it's probably like level so I would be level 75 or so by the time that I get to empower monoliths. Maybe even lower than that, because they made the empower the grind too empowered faster than it's been in the past. Um if you're a brand new character, maybe 75 or like level 80. Uh, level 75 is when you first you're like so level 76 when you first get your level 20 skills and like you don't have your end game gear at that point because there's gear that requires like level 85 or something so like, you don't have your end game gear on and like lagging in the campaign is like a level 40 zone or so it's like level 40, 50 40 like 47 or 48 it's like a level 47 or 48 zone if you're taking like a level 70 character and you go back to like the level 50 zone, that's only like a 20 differential. Your character is really not that much stronger. You're probably not going to one-shot him, right? Yeah, Lagan's like around level 50 or so. I don't think you're supposed to one-shot the boss. On the other hand, taking 5 to 10 minutes is kind of a long time. So those are just like numbers that I keep in the back of my head. Again, I'm not saying his argument's wrong. I'm just saying like, skill diff. Okay, <clears throat> let's... There is no point in playing past a certain point because of it you might as well start a new character or just play a different game there is no replayability unless you're the niche person who wants to go the corruption and sort of have that sort of bragging rights of corruption but pretty much run that by me again hold on that will kill last epoch quicker than anything there is no point in playing past a certain point because of it you might as well start a new character or just play a different game. There is no replayability unless you're the niche person who wants to go the corruption and sort of have that sort of bragging rights of corruption. There's no, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth. I just want to understand what he's saying. There's no replayability in Last Epoch because once I complete all content, quote unquote, which to him is walking through normal monoliths and unlocking empowered monoliths. Once I get to empowered monoliths, I've completed all the content of the game because I've seen all tile sites. I think he's what he's saying. And I want to go back to the campaign and beat up the bosses. That's like wanting to beat up a middle schooler when you're in high school. Like, it might still be a struggle Right? Like... Ooh. Again, I don't hate his argument, but like a middle, like, a, like an 8th grader or a ninth grader, like a 12-year-old like a or a 14-year-old. Is a 14-year-old in high school? I think so. But like, sure, one's in high school and unlocked in power monoliths, and the other one's only 12 years old, but like, it's still going to be a fight, right? <laughs> And, like, you're probably going to win. Got some years on him. But, like, 12-year-old. 12-year-old lagging. He's got a chance. But pretty much, I'll show this. If I can find my mouse. Yeah, I want to see the... Uh, I want to see this. this. Awesome drawing. Fuck and off, dude. Hide your camera. <laughs> what? Just make sure my head is not in the way of it. Move my face out of the way. Now, we have, obviously... You log in. Yeah, his arguments are not actually wrong. Yeah, I don't think his arguments are wrong. I'm just like, I'm kind of memeing on him because the, the anecdotal evidence that goes along with his arguments is funny. But I, yeah, I don't, his arguments themselves, they're not off base. There's massive spike compared to anything else is you logging in, getting your first 30 levels. You are starting to create your character. You're starting to get some of your gear. Once you get that gear point, you go, oh, now we just got to play the campaign. I've... Is he about to say that your characters are done at level 75? 
I've been making fun of people for literal years who say that your characters are done at level 75. I can't wait for him to say those words. This is fun. And generally, you're crushing a lot of things, but then you're not able to just destroy everything because of the said rules. And one thing I will say, poison needs to change and bleeds and that you shouldn't be able to get like 30 stacks of poison in like two seconds. And then either use all your heals and die to some trash creature because you're constantly healing from the degen or you die because you don't have enough heals. This is early echoes where you're getting the exalted. Now this could be like this or it could be exaggerated out depending on the player and their skill level and everything. Around a level 75 is pretty much when you have everything. You're just picking the odd extra passive point. And then once you get all your gear, it goes down and it's not playable. Because once you get to a certain point, depending on why you're playing, generally it's to test yourself, go as far as you can. It goes douche and crashes because of the damage reduction. Now, in the next... It crashes because of the ex it, it, it does kind of crash it 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 plateaus it plateaus because the accessibility and the grind shut up merchants guild i don't want to talk to you and the grind for getting the right tier seven items and the right two or three or four lp unique items and slapping them together and getting the right affixes there like that that substantially slows down and like so i'm worried that his argument here is bad because it crashes because of the damage reduction. No, that's not true. But it, it dramatically slows down because you probably have like 90, maybe 90, let's say 90, maybe 95, 90, 90% 90 of your build and you know what your end game character is going to be. Like, so I'm playing a healing hands character in the background, right? Am I, I'm playing like a healing hands divine bolt kind of thing. And my gear is not perfect, but like, I know how much damage i'm about to get i'm missing like 300 percent increased damage i'm missing a little bit of extra armor shred and i guess i'm missing another 20 cast speed but like the 20 cast speed is like an absolutely insane grind and gated behind tons and tons and tons of rng and i might literally never get it so like i i understand my gear my gear's not perfect but like it's pretty good and i'm missing stuff to say that it's it it falls off a cliff because of the damage reduction i think is making the wrong argument as to what the problems are in Last Epoch. And I, I think there's lots and lots of good things to complain about Last Epoch. I don't think this is one of them. First of all, because he seems to be harping on boss damage reduction, which is literally about to change. Hmm. He's <laughs> literally about to change. Someone in chat says, I argue that a build is done at level 86 and your final piece of gear can be equipped. You got a good blessing, good uh, RNG, 86, you're done. F good blessings. If you can get good blessings by level 86, you're a genius because I've never had that. I need to grind for my blessings because I, I got bad RNG. Um, the, fa the last few passive points, I agree with you, like past level 90 or so, like your passive points, you're really not getting much for all of your effort, but like you're completing your character and you're grinding for better LP items. You don't need all the power that you get in Last Epoch. Currently, corruption's in a very weird spot. I made a different post about this on YouTube if you want to see the community post, but I said like level or like a thousand corruption's very strange to me right now because a thousand corruption represents the fact that you got to a thousand corruption. Corruption scaling is weird. The difficulty is weird. All the difficulty spikes have been uh, trimmed down. Um, and like, I don't, I don't know whether I'm supposed to be impressed by anyone getting to a thousand corruption, quite frankly, but that's a conversation for a different time. But people like to finish their characters and you don't need to because you can enjoy a video game in a different way that I can enjoy a video game. I enjoy rerolling. For the people who enjoy rerolling, for the people that I call build scientists who like to create a whole bunch of characters and maybe they play in legacy very often because they want to jump on this level 100 that they have over here and test out this interaction. For those kinds of people, yeah, level 86, even level 80, even like I got to empower monoliths and I played for half an hour, maybe that's the end game for them because their goal is not to push to a thousand corruption and that's totally fine. Um, I think... 
the issue that I'm developing with this video here is that there are lots of good critiques of Last Epoch. And I think bad critiques get in the way of focusing on good critiques. Let's keep watching. Next launch, they will be adding the last three chapters. I'm in my face across again. Last three chapters, which I believe will be the Emperor, the Snake Lady that you lose it last epoch to, and uh, Obelis, Obelis, Orbis. Whatever their name is, I can't think of it right now. <laughs> if you uh, if you want to know what the last three chapters are, Chad, I uh, it's <clears throat> well the first one is going to be uh, meeting Orobis. That'd be really cool. The next one's going to be uh, Raye. So you're going to go fight Raye and stuff, and then you're going to finally confront the Immortal Emperor. So you didn't hear it from me, but uh, <laughs> and then you'll also get some sort of pinnacle bosses, which I assume will be Raye or one of them sort of. I would assume like an uber version of Harit, uh, Raya and the snake lady, snake god, the snake lady that steals the last epoch is different. So I assume they're going to add that. That's going to play a little tiny bit of replayability. And that all that noise is the cat running around destroying. Someone in Twitch chat said he's a correctly identifying progression issues post empowered, but he's attributing it to boss DR for some reason. Yeah, agreed. Everything. That will come into a little bit of playability, but the damage reduction, pretty much once you reach level 50, there is pretty much no point in expecting you to just destroy everything. You can destroy little things, but you can't destroy the big guys or the bosses. I, I totally disagree with this. I, I know I've already said I disagree with this, but the chat, I've played bad builds. And I play bad builds so that I gain personal experience so that I communicate more effectively. I've played builds that are fine at killing tier four Jura. And the reason that I talk about tier four Jura, which is this is this is very important. This is a good point here. The reason that I talk about tier four Jura, and that's much more important to me than any corruption that you get to, because I don't care. Tier four Jura is basically, for our intents and purposes, it is a punching bag. And it is the perfect way to identify how much um, how much leech or how much recovery does your build have? What's the comfortable play style of your build? Can you stand there and punch tier four Ajura while the little lightning lasers are going off? What can you take? Can you tank the, the big one shot? Can you tank the puddles on your ground? Is your build completely degenerate? So tier four Jura and include, so I guess if there's any content creators out there, tier four Jura is important. It's a benchmark. It's a benchmark for your offense, your defense, your playability, your recovery mechanism, um, what you need to dodge, what you don't need to dodge. And then also how much damage you deal. Cause it, there's a very clear difference for me in a build that can kill tier four Jura in a minute, which by the way, a minute, a 60 seconds for tier four Jura is excellent. That means you have a good build that is totally the builds that are killing tier 4, tier 4 jora in like 15 seconds are stupid they are really really dumb the builds that kill her in one hit shut up but like i've played builds that have a completely reasonable play style against tier 4 jora and you basically face tank everything just not the big eight second one channel or the channel one shot thing but like maybe those builds take like two minutes to kill the boss and like that's pretty slow they could do it it's fine but like maybe you play that build for a different reason maybe the build's like really fucking enjoyable for clear speed but the single target kind of sucks and like that's okay i don't mind that my point is we're saying there's no point in building damage because boss dr is a thing it sounds like you didn't you didn't build damage <laughs> I don't know, man. Damage reduction, which will then kill last epoch. I don't you will know. play it. Content creators will do maybe one, maybe two characters, depending on where the cycles are for the other games. The uh, build creators will create probably four or five builds, maybe slightly more if they can find different things or th they add different uniques like they did with some of the stuff this time. It changes things up and you can create more content on it. That's the only reason why a lot of them played was because they're waiting for the uh, poe season to come out and then now it's all poe 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 even last epoch is given up 
they pretty much did a here's the cycle one in a nutshell because they've given up and they know that they can't keep people going to poe and even if people have problems with poe they'll come back probably play for a couple of weeks their friends will get all the good gear and then carry them and they'll go back to poe and be carried by their friends so there's no hope really the last epoch at the moment they need to change the damage reduction i believe some of the ailment stuff i think resistances should be slightly stronger and ward should be less strong the frightening thing also is they needed a survey from 70,000 people roughly to say anything that is broken in the game should be There's lots of good criticisms for Last Epoch. Bad criticisms get in the way of good criticisms. Um, they needed a survey. They used a survey. That That's wonderful. That, it, that's one of the best things that we like about EHG. We, you and me, the community, people love they rave about how good the communication is from ehg they had a stance and they put out a survey and they said prove me wrong and then we did and they're like oh shit i guess everyone feels differently than how we feel you know what community you make a good point and then they changed it fixed as soon as it can be fixed not next cycle now this does come from i believe the fact that some of the devs have said that they are pro cheats in other games not this game but have used cheats growing up playing games that mindset does not work in my opinion as a developer because you expect people to either get boosted either pay to win or anything like that to get past or They'll just roll. It, would, it would take a long time and a separate video to discuss these points here. These are not good points. Um, you can go back and watch my videos talking about those specific feedback surveys and when uh, when they first asked for feedback and the video that I made providing feedback and then post-survey what they said they were going to change and my video about that as well. Um, it would take too long and it's it's literally not worth it to talk about it here. That sounds like I'm talking down. It is. Pretty much turning into Diablo 3. They're just going base level until the expansion. And then once the expansion comes out, it will probably be like the Necro expansion for D3. It will have a massive rise and then a massive drop because the replayability won't be there. They'll probably allow power creep. Uh, massive rise and massive drop is a design feature of action RPGs because these action RPGs tend to be cyclical these days based on a three month cycle. Path of Exile does that. And that's a good thing because it allows you to deep dive into a game for a month or maybe even more than that. And then pause from that game and go do something else instead. It is a different psychological tactic that a game uses to stimulate involvement in it, as opposed to something with like a daily login reward, right? So a daily login reward wants you to log in every single day and it wants to create a psychological habit so that you put that in your schedule so that you're always logging in. You're always getting that daily login reward. And you're like, have you're in that, that, um, that ecosystem. So it's, it's psychological, it's manipulative. It's also how video games work. So you get used to it. Um, having a three month cycle to me is something that I enjoy. Is it manipulative? Yeah, it is. But so are two for one offers when I go to the grocery store. So this gives me time to go really hard for one month, which is awesome. And then it gives me time to relax and play some other games. Maybe I want to go play some indie games. Maybe I want to go play Path of Exile. Maybe I want to go play like a, like a card game for a while. And like, that's a fun thing to do in terms of content for me as a content creator. And also for you as someone who doesn't want to feel like they're missing out on something. I think that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Which will keep certain people happy. Most people won't because the actual enjoyment's not there. If you had power, the power creep only works if you can get to a certain point and then it requires skill. If they decide, Say the pinnacle bosses, they want 10% of all the player base to actually be able to do it. Then make it that difficult, that skill-wise, you need to be in the top 10% to be able to beat the pinnacle bosses or the ubers. 
the next level down, maybe 25% of the entire play playing population can do whatever they I feel like I'm not supposed to fast level. forward. Maybe reach corruption 200 is really I'm I feel like I'm not supposed to fast forward, but I'm also not used to being a react Andy, so I don't know how other react Andys do this. Next year. That way you're not going corruption 1000, 2000, 3000 because that's just D3 in the risk. That would just get silly. So you end up corruption 200, a top level corruption, and corruption 2 to 500 is where your 25% players can reach, then 50% of the players can empower the monoliths, and then 85% of the players can get to around their empowerment, depending on where you want. If you want 100% to empower it, I think that's wrong. You should, everyone should be able to in time. But if you can go from login to empower without much requirement for a skill gap, that's where the replayability is not going to be there because the higher tier players won't go there. That's why PoE keeps upping the higher tier. They want the higher tier things to be unattainable by a lot of people without investment of time and effort or look at different resources, go to different people and check out people's streams or builds or talk to the communities. And they rely on the community, helping the community to get to that level, even if it's slightly hand in pocket, making sure that people get paid sort of thing. But it increases the community and the amount of things that people are doing and they talk about it and all that. Last Epoch, no one's talking. People want this, that or the other build generally because those builds were broken up until recently because they refused to change it because they were too scared to lose what? They've already earned 20 or 40 million, like I've said. What are they scared of? I don't know. They were just scared because their launch was bad because they didn't actually have the systems in place to do the information coming and going properly and processing it in a timely fashion. And now they do. So I assume next launch, it will just be lagged due to the amount, the amount of people, which I assume will increase from almost 300K to 300, 400K if they finish the campaign, get the pinnacle bosses and drop the damage reduction. If they don't drop that, everyone will go, okay, I'm only playing to like level. I, I completely disagree. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wait, what did he just say? He said the most, he, did he say the most important things? Hold on, hold on. Because he said something like the most important things are finish the campaign, get rid of boss damage reduction, and something else. I just want to make sure that I'm making fun of the right thing. Hold on. The system's in place to do the information coming and going. Fine, fine. I'll slow it down. Hold on. Properly and processing it in timely fashion. And now they do. So I assume next launch, it will just be lag due to amount amount of people, which I assume will increase from almost 300K to 300, 400K if they finish the campaign, get the pinnacle bosses and drop the damage reduction. It'll it'll increase. He said he said more players will log in. It's like 300K up to like 400K if they finish the campaign, which like the, the campaign not being there is goofy, but like last box excellent. Eh. If they add Pinnacle Boss, Pinnacle Boss is like very hype, very exciting. Love that. Accessibility to difficult content has been something that we wanted in the last epoch for a long time. I don't care that 5,000 corruption is difficult because I don't want to put in the time to get there. I want difficult content faster because if I'm at 1,000 corruption, I'm probably looking for difficult content. So instead of the linear scaling that they introduced for, for corruption, it should probably be like quadratic or exponential at some point. But that's a conversation for a different time. The boss DR, it's weird that he keeps talking about boss DR. It is a weird thing to really hone in on, isn't it? The, again, there's so many things to talk about. Why not talk about bugs? <laughs> there's so many bugs. <sighs> uh, all right, whatever. If they don't drop that, everyone will go, okay, I'm only playing to like level 85, empowering my thing. I might do some corruption just to go, yeah, yeah, I, I went to None of this is got true. things. And then they'll just go, yep, when's the next season of POE? Oh, I can make a, go play D4 and then say how bad it is. And that'll be pretty much where Last Epoch sits for in, its entirety. Hopefully they do change things and it doesn't take... 70, 100, 200,000 people saying the exact same thing, drop the damage reduction for them to actually do it. If they just drop that, the replayability actually goes up a lot because there's a reason to build, 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 and you're smashing all the bosses and you're going through corruption and you're reaching a point where you actually can't get past without better stuff or more skill. But that's my opinion of why Last Epoch is pretty much causing its own downfall. What's your opinion? Stick it in the comments. And if you wish, there is super th thanks where you can donate to... Who said to drop the DR? Uh, he's recommending dropping DR. Uh, EHG is going to change DR. He may not know about that already. Um, boss DR, the video essay. If you want to make a video essay about Boss DR, you can do way better than this. Um, 
this is not as stimulating a conversation as I thought it was going to be, but I did my best to add some color commentary on top. Um, yeah, listen, people, people enjoy games in different ways. And like, I, I feel like I say this often, but then you in Twitch chat and on YouTube keep telling me that you like when I say that games are made to be fun. So I'm going to keep reminding you whether you've heard it from me before, or maybe you haven't heard it from me before, games are made to be fun. If you enjoy a game, you should play it. That's wonderful. If you find yourself only logging into a game because you're doing a daily, if you find yourself only logging into a game because you think that that's where your content audience is, but you're not actually enjoying the game, people can tell that you're phoning it in. So don't play it. Do something else. Life is way too short for this. Um... Last Epoch's wonderful. I am happy to recommend Last Epoch to people at this point. There are lots of things to complain about. There are lots of bugs and imbalanced things and unintended interactions and just real goofy things that exist in Last Epoch. However, I still think Last Epoch is a fantastic game, and I will continue to recommend it to people because of that. If you have different opinions than me uh, on uh, the kinds of things we've watched in this video, my comment section is also open to you. So let me know what your thoughts are and I will talk to you next time.